find favor in your sight. Lord, please hear my heart cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. joining us on this evening. I pray that you've had a wonderful week thus far. As I was going through my devotions and just kind of going over in my mind what God would have me to share with you on, on tonight, he brought one word to mind, and that one word is patience. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have problems with patience. Is there anyone that's listening to me right now that can identify with the fact that no matter how seasoned we may think we are, no matter how mature in life that we may think we are, no matter how far we've come with our educational accolades, with our professional uh, achievements, that patience is one thing that there are so many of us today are struggling with. Well, family, if you don't mind, if you will bow with me as we pray. I want to share with you what God has, has given and placed on my heart. Amen? Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for who you are and praise you, Father, for, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do, even in the midst 
of anxiety. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that your word would go forth today. Father, that it would uh, bless those, Father, that are having the same challenges that I have as it relates to patience. And Father, that you would bless those, Father, uh, uh, and then give them what they need, Father, to, to wait on you. Father, I pray now for those that say that they are blood-bought because of your death, burial, and resurrection. And I also pray for those, Father, that are still struggling with their relationship with you, Father. Maybe they have yet to accept you in the pardon of their sin. Father, I pray now, as only you can, use me, use your word, Father, uh, as an invitation to those, Father, to not only get to know you, Father, but to accept you. Use this as an opportunity, Father, to strengthen those, Father, that are struggling right now in the name of Jesus. I know you can do it. And, Father, I lift those, Father, that may be going through challenges right now with health, challenges right now on their jobs, challenges right now, Father, in their finances, challenges, Father, right now for those that are struggling even in their relationships one with another. Father, as only you can, bring forth accountability, bring forth a peace, Father, that surpasses all understanding, one knowing that all of our help comes from you. Now, Father, we thank you. I lift up those families that are with new hope, that are struggling, uh, have families that are, are, are that, and they're struggling with bereavement, they're struggling with illness. I lift up those, Father, that are not with new hope, Father. I lift them up to you all across this land, Father, that, that may be listening to my weak voice. I pray now blessings upon their homes and their families and their finances, their health, Father. Lord, I thank you because I know that what I'm asking, you are already working it out. We thank you, we love you, and we do trust you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Well, family, on, on tonight, I just want to use that one word to help focus your attention on what it is that I believe God has for us tonight. And that one word again is patience. Turn with me over to the book of Acts, chapter 1. We're going to initially be reading from verses 4 and 5. The book of Acts, chapter 1. And again, we will initially be reading from the text, verses 4 and 5. Out of the New International Version, it reads like this. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, family, I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life when when I felt that God was moving just a bit too slow for me and for my situations. And I don't know, again, I don't know about you, but I've made some decisions based on my own intellect, based on my own resources, and not on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I've made some horrible decisions, family, but I've also dealt with some even worse consequences because I just didn't want to wait on the Lord. Maybe you felt and done some of the same things that I've done. I don't know. But let me share with you a particular situation that I felt not once, not twice, but probably many times in my adult life. You know, as a man of the house, the primary breadwinner, on several occasions, family, I've been in a position to wonder, where will my mortgage payment come from? Where, where will the car note come from? The light bill, the water bill, the gas bill, the food to put on my table, and the list can go on and on and on. And sometimes, family, in an effort not to worry my wife and not to especially worry my children, I've tried to deal with these issues on my own and just lifted, and, and, and just lifted the family's needs to the Lord. I would pray daily. 
And in most cases, I would pray throughout the day and, and, and I waited on the Lord to answer my prayers. Well, can I be honest about something? Sometimes, family, it felt as though God wasn't hearing my prayers. It felt as though that just maybe he didn't care about me and my family. He didn't care about our situation. He didn't care about the pain and the anguish that I felt that I was going through. And to be totally transparent, family, if it felt as though he really didn't even care about me. Am I speaking to anybody tonight? I mean, think about it. I was the man of the house, the leader of my family, the, the man of God, the priest, the provider, and the protector of my home. So if I was all of this and was being what God called me to be, living the way God wanted me to live, doing what he wanted me to do, the question came to my mind was, why was I dealing with all of these issues? And even more than that, why wasn't he answering me? And this is where I would mess up. I would figure it out sooner, sooner rather than later. Is that, I just want to know, is there anybody here tonight? that can identify with what I'm saying. You've made some bad choices based on your own thoughts, based on your own reasoning, only to find out later that what God had for you was not only better, but what you've done is that somehow you circumvented what God wanted for you and your circumstances. You've waited on God, you, you've prayed, and, and now because the time seems to be about to run out, you make a decision that you felt was best, and even though you weren't at peace with it, I know somebody's hearing me tonight. Well, family, let me pause for a moment because I need for you to understand tonight that because I believe that there are a lot of folk, men and women, that are in leadership positions within their homes, they're in leadership positions on their jobs, and that are feeling the same way that I'm sharing with you tonight. You've done your best, you, you've been committed, you've been faithful, but you still feel that you're all alone. Am I speaking to you? Well, family, God wants you to know today that he has not forgotten about you. And as, he, and as he's promised in his word, very simple, he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. Now, getting back to my story. See, that there were many nights, that family, that I wrestled with the Lord. I was angry that I was dealing with the situations that I was dealing with with seemingly no solution at hand. I, I know that my wife must have wondered what was going on because I know and, and, and I, now I can admit that my attitude was probably not the best and my kids could probably sense something wasn't right either. I would often get up through the night and fuss with the Lord. Why aren't you answering me, Lord? I would ask, why don't you give me the relief that I need? Is anybody feeling where I'm coming from? How long will I have to suffer through this? And this went on. This is what I was going through on a regular, and, 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 and if I were to be completely transparent, I probably still have some of those same issues even now on occasion. But still, I press on because my family needs me to be strong. My family needs me to believe even when I'm actually doubting. Sometimes it's hard being the head. Sometimes it's hard being in leadership position. Because if anybody needs to stand strong, if anybody needs to have faith, if anybody needs to not waver, it's you, the leader. Am I speaking to anybody? Well, family, angry that the Lord was holding me back. 
Sometimes I would reluctantly crawl back in the bed at night after I've cried to him, pull the sheets up over my head and, and try to go back to sleep. But how many of you know sleep was hard to find when you're in the midst of your storm? So unable to fall asleep, sometimes I would get back up and I would make my way back into the living room and in my mind and, and, and in my mind family I, my, my mind wandered back to the particular to this particular passage that I've already read for you on tonight Acts 1 4 through 5 on one occasion watch this now it says while he was eating with them he gave them this command do not leave Jerusalem. Here it is. But wait for the gift that my father promised. Some of you just missed it. Let me read that for you again. It says, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Now, listen, they didn't have to read it in the Bible. They didn't have to hear it from some preacher. They heard it from the Lord themselves. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised. In other words, listen, I need for you to be patient. I need for you to stay where you are. It's right there in the text. Stay where you are and wait because my father, Father has made a promise to you, and because he's made that promise, he is true to his word because the Bible says he cannot lie. The Bible says wait patiently for the Lord because he's coming through just as he promised. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I already hear somebody saying, Pastor, you say it. The text says it right there. A few days. Well, I've been hanging on to my situation for a week. I've been hanging on to my situation for a month. I've been hanging on my situation for a year, Pastor. And listen, I'm not getting no relief. Well, let me share something with you. God's time is not our time. The Bible suggests that if we wait of those that wait upon the Lord, watch this, shall mount up as wings on an eagle. That means, family, listen, when we wait on the Lord, our strength, our solution will come from the Lord. Think about it. Jesus' family spent 40 days after his resurrection. Think about it. Preparing his disciples to spread the good news. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been prepared, if you've ever gone through some training, the one thing that you're ready to do when the training is over, you're ready to act. You're ready to get into some action. Well, I can't imagine that these disciples were no different than you and I are today. Those disciples had been taught for, uh, for, for, for the entire time that they walked with Jesus. They were prepared to go out and, and perform miracles. They were prepared to go out and see what God was going to do through them. They were ready to see the manifestation of what God was going to do. But Jesus gave them one command. Listen, I know you're ready for the answer. I know you're ready to see what's going to happen. But I need for you to wait until the Lord comes. I need for you to wait until the Spirit falls on you. I need for you to wait for my Father's timing, not yours. But watch this. But it's right here in the text. I need for you to go with me to verse 7 and 8. Because this is where you're going to see not only how the disciples were thinking, but this is how you're going to see how a whole lot of us think. Verse 7 and 8 says, And he said to them, watch this, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But watch this. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Did you catch that? 
It's not for you to know the time. It's not for you to know the date. That's for God and God alone. But when the Holy Spirit comes down on you. Some of you say, well, Pastor, the Holy Spirit is a good thing. What, what do you mean when the Holy Spirit comes down on us? Well, let me share something with you, family. When, 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 when God moves in your circumstances, he moves by the ushering of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit falls on someone, on something, in order to, and to be an answer to your prayer, in order to be an answer to your circumstances, in order to put money in your pocket to help you with a bill, to help you with a job, it's by the Holy Spirit moving in your circumstances. But before he moves, the Bible says, wait, be patient. And family, I don't know about you, but when I first read this particular text, I, I was quick to judge the, the disciples. By, by, uh, I was quick to judge their response to what Jesus was saying. But yet I've determined through prayer and meditation that I'm no different than they are. Sometimes I get caught up in what I want. I forget about God's instructions of what he wants for my life today, preferring to focus on my own plans for tomorrow. See, family, Jesus knew that his disciples would fail in their own strength. And the same holds true for you and I. God wants us to trust him and to conform to his timing, even when we think we're ready. See, the tendency is to ignore God's timing when life feels like it's moving a bit too slowly. And, and it, see, that wasn't unique. That's not unique for you and I. This has been going on since the beginning of time. And see, and like, 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 man, like a man, I often moved around at my own pace sometimes and, and, and only to suffer both physical and spiritual consequences. Then nothing hits me harder than realizing my own sin and having to confess my own rebellion and surrendering to the Lord's will instead of my own. But family, today, God gives his children the same Holy Spirit, that same ushering of the Spirit for guidance and for comfort and for strength that he gave his disciples more than 2,000 years ago. We believe our ways and, and our timings is often better than God's. But guess what? We, when we do on our own, we miss out on the precious gift of full and, and abundant life lived through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, if you're patient, you can be at peace. If you know that God is going to work it out in your favor, you can be at peace. You don't have to have you don't have to grow gray hair before your time. You don't have to have a face full of wrinkles when you should have when it should be smooth. You don't have to be sweating and and, 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 and crying and and, and, and tense and, and, and struggling because why? Because you know that God will come through right on time. And as the old folk used to say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. So family, I encourage you today, embrace patience and wait on the Lord until he's ready to use you. Yes, I know some of you already asked me, what do you mean use me? When I'm in my storm, what do you mean use me? God is always using you. God is always using me. God uses our circumstances. God uses our trials. God uses our tests in order for us to be able to testify to a dying world that Jesus is real. Yes, he does. He uses even our storms, even our valley experiences. He uses them for his glory. And watch this. Until he's ready to use you, stay still. Wait on God and watch him 
do what only he can do. Amen. And praise God. Will you bow with me? Father, thank you again for another blessed day. And uh, as always, we thank you for your word. I pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that someone was helped on tonight. Use your word, Father. Use your spirit, Father, to convict, but not only to convict, but to console. We thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Family, I want to encourage you. Again, be patient. Watch God. He's working, even when you don't know it. And I also want to invite you, those of New Hope, on this coming Sunday, we'll be celebrating uh, our first Sunday communion as well, and we'll be doing drive-by, drive-through communion, but uh, between the hours of 11 and 1 o'clock, weather permitting, we'll be right here. We'd love to see your smiling faces. Don't forget, wear your mask. Why? Because we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless.